going to look. That's Everybody a lot easier to see over there as well. Everybody back. Hopefully that. Uh, Wait that for it. Up. Wait for it. Yep. Yes. Yes. No, probably. Uh, can you click back on the game? No. Oh, nope. we need. No, nope. we say no. Nope. We're not online yeah. yet. We're not online yet. It's okay. working. Dice star. I'll give the trigger. Bad. <laughs> and we're back. Is that working? Right. 720p. 720p. Transmission. Okay. Not half bad. The HD future. Okay. Click and let's this give thing. a big shout out to Jane for making sure she's keeping us on our toes. <laughs> Rock on. Thank, Thank you. you, Jane. Everyone, Continue that's Jane. Continue the story. All right. All right. Oh yeah. Hey, this is Jane. She's Yay. been posting on forums, on Massive Child's forums. And she puts um, all our t-shirts to shame. Here, say hello to everyone, Jane, Hi. right here. Hey, <laughs> that's it. The, uh, are there any questions, are there any questions uh, for Jane from the chat? Yeah. Get to know Jane, everyone. I was on the chat anyway to get to know Jane. <laughs> Don't be boring, Jane. This oh, is that's true, fun. but this is, you get, this is like, you know, more in-person sort Jane, of like. Jane, Freelancer0107 says, what's your favorite? No, that was Kirby Tails. Sorry, Kirby Tails. Favorite color? You have to answer all these questions. Depends. Is it tan? Depends. Okay. Uh, there has to be a better. So, so Jane is an ooh, Jane. a senior environment artist here at Double Fine, right? She uses lots of colors. And uh, her work is amazing. Can be featured in such games as The Cave. Boom. Uh, stacking. Boom. Brutal Legend. Jane, what what's other your games? fighting style? Drunken master or wild monkey? Straight sword. Straight sword. Uh, straight nice. sword. Okay, yeah, that's Mental legit. Note, do not mess with Jane ever. I don't know sword. if you're allowed to rename them. Can we ask the chat? So there are many different versions of this game. Thanks for visiting, Jane. Bye. That have Jane. been created since the PS1 version. Uh oh. Uh. And we're just wondering, shout out to everyone. It's been a while since we played it. Are you allowed to rename your character? We're looking for Hans Buskirk on the uh, thread. Hans Buskirk, <laughs> yeah. You will notice that uh, Zane has returned. Zane, yes, we've named Rams as Zane. We do have Zane. Uh, in the family of our it. fallen warriors, Zane. our XCOM playthrough. Deuce, deuce, Zane. Double, double kill. That's how he but it rolls. Looks, but it looks like that's not, that's not an option. Nobody from the stream? Everybody's confused. No, they're all loving it. They're, they're, they're. Um... No, are they? Do they? Do they have any thoughts on whether or not we're allowed to rename our characters? It's something that nobody can remember actually. <laughs> Final Fantasy Tactics. That's a good question. We should check out the interactive on disk tutorial. Oh. Rybox says you have to hire more people to name them. Oh, okay. Nice. That's so it's nice. Uh, uh, good looking out. Good looking out. So yeah, let's stuff. just let's just get these guys out of the way, right? Yeah. I'll, although I do like the name Hamilton. Hamilton. And, it's pretty and cool. Got, got, shout out to Silky. Oh, Silky, yeah. yeah. Silky. Silky on there. Do you have, so do we only have Chemist and Squires at this point? Uh, yeah. We're so yeah. early on. Well, we I mean, we can... Silky's a... She's a knight. And I think that's your capacity at this point. She's a knight, but, I mean, she can't really do much knightly stuff yet, right? It's going to take a little while. You can hit with sword. It's pretty knightly. Can't cleave a helm. Mandalia Mandalia pain. That is... That is a really awesome thing. Massive I like challenge. that the knights get shattered equipment. You're like, I'm just going to break your armor. It's like, oh, okay. Yep. This game also takes place in like, regen or something. What is it? I don't, don't act like you don't know. You yeah. have a Palatanian <laughs> poster. Uh, it's Ivalis. <laughs> right. Excuse me, idiot. It's the world, it's the world of Ivalis. What the hell? Deathcore. They attacked you. That, of course, sounds pretty cool. Oh, 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 oh. They you want to do. Choice, choice, choice. I think our duty is to destroy the death world. Yeah, agree to it. We want to be the death Yeah, our duty is to destroy the death world. So that we can take over and be the new death world. Alright. I'm going to try to turn up the TV. That shouldn't impact anything, should it? No, it shouldn't. I don't like that logical thinking. There we go. It's good? coming through. Yeah. yeah excellent. All right. Hey, here's our first question, you guys, and I think it's a really good one. Fantastic. Okay, good. Brad, let's start it off with just a general. What? Let's hear more about the influences of, of uh, FFT on Massive Chalice. But apparently, your mic isn't on. Oh, my Brad? mic isn't on. Uh oh. No, it looks like it's on. It looks on. Hey, it just is it not actually coming through? 
Hey, uh, fans, can uh, you? Oh, it is. Yeah, it check, is. Check, We're check. confirmed. We're good. It's good. Right. Yep. We're good. You know what? It was in my pocket. There's a lot of other stuff in my pocket. Brad's got the adamantium endoskeleton. Maybe, yeah, maybe that was. Yeah, maybe that was happening. Yeah, influence. So, I mean, part of it is just like really loving this game, and the fact that it's a, it's a fantasy tactics game, and it was the one that I like kind of got super invested in and just really, really enjoyed. But um, I think that there are like so many good things about it. Like I like the uh, I like its use of height. Um, that's that's super awesome. I like the the, the squares feel really meaty. This is something that I like. It's like I mean we talk a lot about XCOM uh, being a big influence to the game as well. But um, you know the X the, the squares in XCOM are very small, right? It's like there's a lot of room, and that game's all about ranged combat. So I think that as we go and we want to put like a lot of melee combat in the game, I think it's really good that like the squares feel pretty large. The characters take up a lot of space. That way, you can actually like block corridors and like, use get in each other's way and like pacing matters and things like that. I think that that part's pretty important. But I think the biggest part of this game, you need the mouse. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I think My the biggest bad. thing is uh, the job system. The job system is is just amazing. Sure. I, I totally love it. Like. The fact that your characters are like highly customizable, that you can have them like, you know, train as a knight for a while, and then go and train as a um, uh, like as a white mage, and then come back and like set the um, their second secondary ability to be white magic, and then it's like there is no explicit paladin class in Final Fantasy Tactics, but a knight that can use white magic as a secondary active, it's like yeah, that that totally feels like a paladin, right? If that's some if that's something that you want to create. So I think that that part is, is probably the most influential piece, is that, and, and we want to do it through, um, through our bloodline system, where each character, you know, so you're not going to be able to, like, take these characters and really, like, train them up exactly the way that you want, but by, um, you know, having marriages and having, um, having children, uh, that's how you'll sort of create these, these, like, hybrid classes, where it's like, you know, the way that we've talked about it is, like, um, our, our current thinking is that it will be a combination of like the, the lord of the keep, who is the, the primary class that is then passed on to the character, but then the, the partner that you put with them will bring uh, the secondary abilities. And I mean, that might be you know very similar to how it's represented in, um, in Final Fantasy Tactics, where it's like sort of your class, whatever, whatever job you have currently in Final Fantasy Tactics, that, is, that determines the equipment that you can wear, what that determines like. what you look like, and what your primary, uh, your primary active skill can be, right? And then any, um, yeah, so your secondary stuff can be from any previous job you've learned, and you're talking about like, yeah, I think that feels really cool to sort of come from the non cerny piece of your, of your lineage. Oh, Ryan, is here, our audio guy. Oh, even softer. Okay, yeah, we can totally turn that down. Okay. Drop the mixer. And the audio is only coming out of one channel for the, for the mic. That's all I'm only getting on my left. Just FYI. You can, you can hear it here to get a better understanding. We had to set up in a new room today. So yeah, we were. Yeah, a yeah thanks for dealing with this, you guys. Sorry for the delay. Um, and thanks for hanging in there with us. Sweet. Is that good? Okay. Yeah. Good, good. We can make hey. our own death screams. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, okay, yeah, so the, I, I think the job system is the part that, like, uh, just because I've played other, you know, there are other very similar um, games to Final Fantasy Tactics, and I, I think that they, they don't have the same. So the other thing about it that's really great, I think, is that you have not only sort of your primary whatever job you have right now, and your secondary, whatever you know, whatever job you've had in the past, there's also then your like your reactionary ability, your passive ability, and your movement ability that can come from different jobs as well. So um, that you just you can just really like customize the crap out of out of the characters that you have. Yeah, and you it's add like, flavor to one class, and it's cool because you can have like three different knights, but they all feel very different. Yeah, yeah. You know, you can have the knight become a summoner for a while and learn how to teleport, and then like come back over and just like now you've got a teleporting knight that also knows white awesome. magic, and you're like teleporting paladin that's crazy you know and it's like i just think that's really rad that the game lets you mess around with that stuff in a lot of different combinations and i feel like the other thing that i love about it is that it is deceptively complex 
it feels like when, when you first start playing it, you're like, yeah, whatever, like everybody's got a job and they get job points and I, I buy my abilities with job points, cool, I get it. But like as you dig deeper into it, you start seeing these synergies across the classes that, that are just awesome synergies. Boom, and you really thought have leadership right Thought there. leadership, that's right, I don't <laughs> yeah. buy it. Brad, oh. along, Brad, along those lines though, will, will Massive oh. Chalice have pre-battle planning Poison. stages where you get a chance okay. for players to see the environment before a battle begins? Um, that's a good question. That, you know what yeah, I mean? that's that, a really good question. I yeah, guess we hadn't really, really thought about that. Um, I, I don't like how in Final Fantasy Tactics you get this little grid of squares and it's really hard to figure out, like, if you haven't played the level before, you, you, you have no clue like where the guy's going to pop up. And I've had some missions where, yeah, it really did help to have my ranged guy be on the far right. But I wouldn't yeah, have no idea. Yeah, because that would put him on the high ground to exactly. start the battle. Yeah, but you yeah. don't really know that and that, um, that feels like... Um, Whereas in XCOM, like, you start out bad. in a safe space, uh, or the new XCOM at least, you start out in a safe space, which is kind of cool, and it gives you like one turn to kind of get the lay of the land, and then um, and then spread out and kind of figure out what your formation is going to be like. So that's, that's what, I like that, that approach a yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah. I think also the more important question would be like, you know, will the environment inform, like, which types of heroes you'd like to send on that mission, you know? So we talked and, about the marshland webfoot Thing. Yeah, yeah, right. that's that's really the only uh, idea kind of that we had so far. Silly example, but it, but it m makes a lot of sense. You know? Yep, it's and if you could if you could see, be like, oh yes. I mean, I almost think that you don't need to see the the battlefield, really. You but but you just kind of have to know like what what region of the realm it's going to sure. be in, sort of what the. So what like, the biome would be. So if you're I, biome is such a nerdy <laughs> word. I love that. What the biome would be. Well, it's like Monster Hunter, right? Like I have my yes. my gear for the sand levels and my mm -hmm. gear for the water levels. And, and that feels really cool. So if you yeah. knew that you were like, oh, it's in the frozen north and you have like, you know, one of your like barbarians or whatever is like, the fight's better in the cold. I mean, that's a pretty, it's a pretty crappy example. Don't hold me or, to that um, one. Yes. But that, I think that would be, mage, I think that would be a under. really cool, um, that could be a really cool thing where it's like, there are environmental uh, differences around the realm, and that when the demons attack, it makes you think about like, well, which heroes should I be sending, and how should I equip them, and stuff. That's I think that's cool. I, I don't think that you know seeing the individual environment would really like alter which which guys you're going to send in, but having the overall environment no. itself. Oh, oh what's going to happen oh. here? Are you? Uh oh. Did Zane just die? Oh. It's fine. He'll be all right. All right, you got three turns to win the battle. Uh, huh? You still got a chemist okay. up, right? Yep. I got a chemist. Chuck some All right over there. So Phoenix along those down. lines, Brad, um, yeah. uh, I guess the, the, switching from environment to, to, to more heritage type stuff, um, you know, artifacts or uh, uh, relics are, are a big, big deal here. Um, have you considered, uh, you know, couples going into a, into a, into a, a castle, uh, can they, will they be able to mix demonic abilities into their bloodlines? Like, I guess that really opens up a larger question of, you know, Demonic powers infiltrating the, the, the humans uh, and, and then taking that next step further to that exact question If they do infiltrate the human kind of bloodlines, etc. Can they mix them up down the road? Sure, yeah, I mean that's something that we haven't really talked a lot about about like what does it mean? You know, what is the the extent of the demonic technology and like how does it actually? Impact like what are the consequences of it and our current thinking now is that like all the demonic stuff will have like definitive advantages that, you know, for you to equip right now, but it will have like these long-term strategic disadvantages, which I think is really cool. Um, but like, I'm really open to the ideas of like, actually having, um, shit, I totally lost my train of thought, because I was just thinking about this guy being an engineer. Yeah. yeah. And shooting guns and stuff, and I totally forgot that was part of Final Fantasy <laughs> Tactics, and that's awesome. Um, <laughs> but like, <laughs> oh, that guy dropped a treasure box. Yeah. You need to go get that. Uh, no, you need to um, end, end the fight quick. The fight. But the uh, no Phoenix Downs. The demonic oh. stuff. Like, like I like the idea of it. Like, oh, we're in like maybe even you know long long term, it could make your your guys like sterile, or it could like you know really significantly decrease the power level of the of the whole like of your whole bloodline and like or end the bloodline in three generations or something. So it's very dangerous. But maybe like short term, it's like you get you know some horns on like the baby, you know, and, it, and it's like, he's actually like stronger. You know, you almost get like, like you get sort of first generation you get get stronger. You get Hellboy, yeah. But then, you know, in a couple generations, it's gonna get out of control. There's also um, another idea that came up, which I can't take credit for, but I can't tell you where this idea is from yet. Find is out that, next week. Find out next week, yeah. Uh, but kind of the exciting idea of like, uh, 
thinking about like the morale system in uh, in XCOM, like having your uh, your like your character that your hero that's been like using a lot of demonic technology, having them like just randomly kind of go berserk and like attack your own squad and stuff, and like that's just like one of the drawbacks. Like there's all sorts of awesome consequences and stuff. Does that answer the main question? What was the main question? Like having it, it does. Impact it's, it's, the, having it impact the bloodlines is really is really no really specifically. Uh, the question was about if it does impact human bloodlines, will demonic relics be able to be mixed? Will their traits be able to mix? Oh, by that's two really interesting. People? That's really interesting. I, I think mean, that that could be really cool. I mean, thinking about a, a bloodline becoming like <laughs> really demonic. Someone said, "Tell Ben to stop sucking." When did you do it? Did you save it last time? Uh, yeah. Hey, good job. Oh, you got thanks. clothes. Receive clothes. clothes. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do that. I feel That's that way great. in the morning. So we had two. Cran Lime, great question. Thanks for asking. What's that? So um, the other thing with it, I mean, we, I, I really just want to make sure we message how the demonic blood, you know, the demonic technology is polluting bloodlines really well. Um, so we can have some interesting events that pop up out of it, but I'm almost imagining like, being able to see uh, a meter or something where you can see like how polluted a bloodline is and, and you're kind of, maybe we don't show you exactly the percent chance that a bad event will happen to that bloodline, but you'll get a sense for it. And so you can, yeah, you can like dabble in the dark text for a little bit, but if you go way into the other side, like crazy stuff's gonna happen and yeah. you're, you're basically gonna I kind of like that. For it. And things just start unraveling at a faster, faster pace, yeah. you know what I mean? Like you go too deep into the dark hours, buddy. And ways to like bring it back, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think like having light you know, a kind of good magic that can reverse some of that effect would be really cool at a cost again. Yep, but yep. So you could actually have a playthrough where you're like, yeah, I'm going to have some bloodlines that are going to go dark with the idea that this other very powerful bloodline is going to try to pull them back out of it um, at the end. Yeah, that's super cool. True story, uh, John did dabble too, dark, too much in the dark arts <laughs> and uh, he used to not be a redhead until about a month ago. Yeah. True story. Well, it happens. That's not oh, true. Man. What are, are you making? I caught the gingivitis. Oh, are you making caught the caught gingivitis? The Limberry Aegis Knights. Good job. Uh, that's Limberry. The Limberry <laughs> Aegis Knights. They make the finest <laughs> ales in all the realm. Limberry. Limberry. A cadet. Like you all. Maybe that could help your game. I'm Zan. Zane. Wall. Zane. Wall. The names are amazing. What is this, this like the world's it. strongest man competition? Zane Bull. Of, of the Hoku Ten. Of the Hoku Ten. A former Hoku police officer in Poland, Zane can lift 50 times his own weight. What's he, going on there? He just grabbed his hand in a very nice way. I like that. Yeah. He is really impressive. I thought, he, him. I thought he went and grabbed his foot in some weird way. <laughs> I thought he like kicked his foot up. You can't really see it. He's yeah. just. He's just like checking his shoe out. Yeah. It's like here. Hey this everyone, shows... Chris Remo's here. Oh, Say what? hi, Chris. Where's Chris uh, Remo? He's Chris Remo right Where's... here. Oh my God. <laughs> hey, Chris. There's like 40 cameras in here. I don't even know where. Yeah, I. It's, yeah. This is it's the, on top the this TV. is the important yeah. one, the That's one on it, top yeah. of the TV. And then after we're gonna do some Dance Central too. Nice. Yes. Stick around. <laughs> That's not happening. Maybe Are you I, gonna save it? Now? I'm definitely gonna. Okay, good. We Ben's gonna really save it, you guys. So a chemist saved that game. I saw that, I saw that. That was amazing. Uh, critical question. Yes. Chocobos. Chocobos. Come on. So we, uh, <laughs> what is happening? I don't know. It's like this emulator is really fidgety, you guys. Number six uh, uh, said, hey Chris, thanks for helping me earlier on the forums. Way to go, Remo. All oh. right. Nice, that's very nice. Remo's uh, one of the juggernauts behind our uh, web and community team, so. That's your guy, ladies and gentlemen. Chocobo, somebody, somebody brought up um, steeds. Yeah, mounts. And we talked about it. Um, I think it's an interesting idea. I actually ran with that one further, and I was like, oh, yeah, you could have, like, you know, we could make the bloodline system extend towards the, the mounts, and you have, like, you know, like, bloodlines for steeds, and you're, like, trying to... Separate bloodlines. Yeah, separate blo bloodlines, and you're trying to, like... You know, create better mounts for your uh, for your warriors in the future. Guys, uh, to be honest, the, the mount discussion and uh, uh, mount discussion is, is definitely ramping up here on the thread. So I think we should address that. In particular, someone just mentioned, and I'm not. I kind of like it. Uh, Big head Zach said, "Giant B mounts." Boom. Giant bee mounts bees. sound awesome. No That's on the forum. No legs. I'm a fan of What's, that. There's um, no legs on a giant bee. You don't, bee. You don't have to animate. <laughs> you don't have to animate that. <laughs> yeah. A bee Easier has legs. A bee has legs. Yeah, but you don't animate them walking. But you, right, you don't have to animate what them walking around. That's true. Uh, 
So, uh, Ben, think, can you describe what's happening in the story right now? Okay, so it keeps jumping back and forth in time between now and the previous time, sure, right after sure. your dad died. For those of us who are not, you know, super well-versed in the Zodiac Brave story. Okay. This time. So, uh, so your dad, I think your dad is the old king of the realm. My dad or Zane's dad? Zane's dad. Okay. So he's the old king of the realm. And then there are these two other guys who decide that they want to be king. One's called the Black Lion, one's called the White Lion. I don't remember their names because they're probably really long and stupid. But, uh, or awesome. <laughs> I mean, or they're, really they're, awesome, they're yes. Yeah, positivity here. Like Zalbag like and... Uh, Zalbag. What was the other one, though? You can get that taken hey. care of. With Ball Bane. Yeah, Ball Bane's, Ball Bane's is your dad. Uh, Ball Bane's blah, 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 or whatever is your dad's name. Um, and then these people are happy that you're coming back. So that's basically it. It's like... Uh, no, your character is forgotten by history, and this game is trying to tell his story, uh, which is a nice history play on words. But the uh, I like oh, that. I I just yeah. got that. <laughs> but um, it's just it's a really convoluted way of telling a story, and they don't ever tell you when they're showing a cutscene from the past or the present. So uh, yeah, and as far as I can tell, this is actually happening in the past from the intro scene. So like they flash back immediately yes. and then they start flashing back some more. And there's a lot of um, class warfare going on here, yeah. right? Like one side of nobles is actually using the peasant uprising against the other side mm -hmm. of nobles and there's a lot of class bigotry. Um, hey, Duke Held, uh, on, the, uh, on the chat says, this sounds pretty complicated. Perhaps they should have added B-mounts instead. <laughs> <laughs> well played. It simplified everything. I think that, yeah, I think that yeah. instead of a complex story, if there were just B-mounts that you could ride Speaking around. Speaking of B-mount, I am mashing the B-button. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, I think Please that Ben circle, is trying circle. to mount the B-button right now. How's that working out for you? Hey, here's another question for the you story. guys. I remember the story being pretty good, though. It is pretty like, good. It's just, like, it was fine. You like, gotta really pay attention to it. Yeah, and it's like weird, though, because when I look back at the game, like having not played it in a, for a very long time, the story is not the thing that I remember. It's all the cool like gameplay systems and yeah. mechanics and stuff. And like, we want, we want Massive Chalice to be a very gameplay-focused game, a very mechanics-focused game. So like, yeah, I think that taking the, the mechanics lessons from this and taking the fact that, you know, most people can't describe the Zodiac Brave story <laughs> to someone even 30 minutes later. Uh, I don't know, but I remember it being, being very, you know, pretty good at the time. But yeah, it's not the thing that really, like, stuck with me. It's all the other amazing stuff. Save. Oh my god, we got Save. places. All right, we can, we can grind up some missions now. Yep. Boom. Hopefully we can get an archer soon. Uh, so real quick, back to mounts. Oh I mean, that's just one of those things that we'll have to evaluate <laughs> for scope. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mounts sound great. I was talking about in the forums that I've been playing a lot of the uh, X-Wing miniatures game recently, which I think is awesome, and it's rekindling my love of Star Wars. Um, and Star Wars. I imagine mounts oh. moving very similar to those things, oh. with momentum included. I think it's really cool. Hope we can get to it. We will see. I love. We we almost made it to the Swiggy Woods. Yeah, but we got to. That is a great. Here. That is a great name. Swiggy Woods. <laughs> Swiggy Bad. Woods is like stolen. That's We're a, taking that. <laughs> I don't think we can steal that. Chocobo B mounts and Squeaky Woods. It's happening. You heard it here <laughs> first, people. Confirmed. Confirmed. <laughs> yeah, rock paper shotgun. That is not confirmed. confirmed. Just Wait, confirmed. was there a um? Was there a question that I cut you off? In there, about no, that. that's fine. You guys just have fun. I'll just talk to the people. No, but is there? Was there something that people wanted? There to was know? a couple good questions. Um, I gotta find it. Gotta find it. Blah blah blah. Booty, booty, We're booty. back to the Mandalia Plains. Mm -hmm. That's where they grow the finest Mandalia in the realm. <laughs> The, no, or maybe the Mandals <laughs> own the planes. Ben actually had a Mandalia problem for a while. Oh wait, oh my god, you guys. Well, well we have a lull, yeah. I totally forgot. This is for, this is a shout out to John Carnage, my buddy over at Twitch. Oh, what's happening uh -oh. here? Is this gonna get uncomfortable? Well, I Chocobo! Like, Chocobo! I felt like I had to wear a, a button-down plaid shirt. For all of our viewing fans, all right. uh, yes. make sure you uh, yell every time you see Chocobo, wherever you are. I Work, totally play. Awesome. Oh yeah! Switch, Show, this close this up on the isn't... camera. Oh, did, can you see it on the camera? Nope. The the the, other, the one on the TV there. Oh, snappy dappy. How's that? Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. Look at that. Twitch TV. Okay. Brad Muir representing perpetrating. I just want to like. Here's a great question from Lord of Riva. Uh, can I only have one class in a house, like a mage and mage hybrids, or will there be a way to get another primary class in your house? 
So the way that we've been talking about it right now is that you will, each house will have a primary class associated with it. And then when you establish the house in a keep by taking a hero that is of that surname and you establish them in the keep, that will, uh, and they can be a, a man or a woman. Like it's, we, we want to have a very gender neutral kind of um, lineage, lineage system. That sounded weird. So when you establish one of these characters as, was that a chocolate attack? A choco attack? attack yeah. Delicious. Oh. Uh, so when you, I've had a chocolate attack. I've gained a lot of weight from that. <laughs> Damn chocolate attack. I saw, I did see Anthony eat oh. nine, uh, what were those? Reese's, Reese's, Reese's cups. cups. Nine, they were the little ones. They, they were, were the tiny yep, ones. Yep, yep. It's not so bad. But nine of the tiny ones just bam in a row. Dude, like Tic Tacs, <laughs> it was like pop, 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 pop. It you're, was like a, and you're a big dude. Yeah. I mean, you're you can handle it. Yeah. You can handle it. Okay. My it was, stomach. It was not. Chocolate. You didn't yeah. get yeah. diabetes Tuna, immediately. Uh, from doing it. Uh, true story though. I could hear my heart clogging. However. Uh, okay, wait. Back to the question. Right. So you. Uh, you just All right. Killed, that killed the chocobo. Yeah. Oh. Turned into a feather. Sorry, oh my chocobo. God. Just, so <laughs> did it fist bump you before it died? So the um. Okay, so you take a male or female character and you retire them into one of these empty keeps. Establishing a bloodline. Establish the bloodline of that surname. And then you can take, uh, you can marry characters, you can couple characters into this house to be, what, what are we, do we have a name yet for like the secondary character that is there? Because if it's a man, you would be taking women. I kind of like co -lord. And, and marrying them in. Or co-lord. It's a co-lording co household. Co-lord. Um, so, oh. But but if it's a woman, you would you would be marrying men into this into this household. Uh, Just this one time though, that's the thing. So you have yes. you have the lord of the keep, then and then you region. you can couple them with a co-lord, and then if they are able to have children, then that child will have a primary class of the lord and a secondary class of the co-lord. Co-lord must be from Krypton, however, because that's what his <laughs> name sounds like. You can say Regent, guys. Uh, uh, Regent. Co Ooh, Regent. Regent. There you go. Regent that's sounds good. regal. Um, but uh, Regent of the uh, house. That's the idea. So the idea, we talked about this on the, on the design chat that we put up in update four. Four. Update four. Uh, so if you didn't see that, you should watch it, because it, like, we talked a lot about uh, this system, a lot about just all the various mechanics that we're, that we're planning for the game. He is a really agile. <laughs> What is that thing called? But, um, Stationary. <laughs> Cat. Mulberry. Anyway. What is that thing? <laughs> thing. Anyways, um, so, so the cool thing about that is that then you have a, a bloodline that is associated with the primary class, but everybody in that line can have a different secondary class. And so hopefully, like, with proper planning and also just having uh, a plethora of lords and ladies out there, uh, you'll be able to do something similar to Final Fantasy Tactics, where you can have multiple heroes of the same primary class that have a different flavor with them. And then also they, they'll progress along um, uh, their own skill tree, and so you can further customize those, those mm -hmm. men and women. Uh, and that's really cool. Yeah, and it's, uh, the one thing that, we, that I really like about this system is that you have, um, you know, we talked in the video about like how Swiss Helm mean like fighters. And then, so, so the Swiss Helms will always be fighters. Like everyone down the ages, they will always be like primary class fighter. But then as you marry in different characters into that bloodline, they will have uh, each, each Swiss helm down the, down the line will have various like secondaries or passives or they'll, have, they'll, they'll each have their unique flavor based on which uh, character you're sort of marrying into that bloodline. And so that you really want each of them to feel really different because it's like, yeah, I mean, other, like if they're all the same, I think that it really defeats the purpose of the epic timeline stuff. Yep. You know, it's not it's not as interesting at that point, I think. So, yeah, you really want each one to sort of feel like their own character that's unique with like their own little story and stuff. And this is one of the, the ideas we're playing with. Um, there's been a lot of talk about nature versus nurture and where, you know, like, oh, well, s you know, starting stats are clearly nature and and class is nurture. And, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have to play with a lot well, of these ideas. Mm -hmm. I think that's great. Uh, so, great yeah, that's good. So let's move away that from that for a second. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, another question from Magellius. Uh, this is a good one. Have you any plans for having recurring enemies who come back again and again with newer abilities to fight your own bloodlines? That's pretty sweet. Pretty specific, but it's a great <laughs> idea. I've not thought yeah. of that. I have mean, any I question, Magellius? I like man. the. Uh, I'll be back. <laughs> exactly. The thing. Uh, you like, haven't seen the last of me. <laughs> like the actual, um, like the structure of the game, 
like we've been talking about, like we need, like I want there to be a pretty like strong fictional reason for the fact that the demons have to like go away right. and then come back like years and years later, right? There's gonna be one major battle that happens every, I don't know, five to 20 years or something. Like we have to work in like exactly, you know, like what that, we'll, we'll determine what that number is based on iteration and like what's best for the game and stuff. But I think it's really cool, especially looking at the, um, the reactionary design of XCOM strategy layer. I really want to emulate that as much as possible where you like, you know, run the timeline and then time flows and your characters age and your researching technology and all those things are happening and then boom, it's like the demons attack, like they're, they're back, you know, and it's just, whoa. Uh, I like the idea of there being like, you know, like demon general type characters that are coming back throughout mm. the game and they're getting stronger over time. That's the thing that, that you know, uh, again, that's, that's a very... All right. Um, Nice. All right. Nice well, job, Ben. Well Congratulations. Done, ben. But like, that's a that's a really cool thing. Like from that happens in XCOM, like the um, Chocobo Killer. The what do you call it? Like the the one upsmanship. <laughs> yeah. The fact that the 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 aliens are getting stronger right. over they time. They introduce new ones. And, the, and but I mean, it also happens in all of the the other more fantasy tactical RPGs. Is that you know there's a, a very traditional power curve that happens, and you're fighting more. You know, you're you're fighting enemies that get more powerful over the course of the campaign and stuff. So. And one of one of our ideas for the backstory did involve a a character as like an antagonist, yes, right? So yes. we we haven't talked about that in a while because we've got a lot of other stuff going on. But um, we definitely could have there could definitely be an antagonist or antagonists that mm -hmm. uh, appear multiple times, um, especially if I, I also love the idea that because it's a fantasy world, you could potentially spend some resources to kind of predict when the next battle will happen. Mm -hmm. So you could better plan like, okay, I've got enough time to build this thing before I'm gonna get attacked, or crap, it's gonna happen next year. Uh, I've just gotta buck up now because as soon as I hit that, you know, progress time button, I'm gonna have another another mission. Yep. That's, um, that's, that's really good. Cool. I, I like all those ideas. And, and you know, another question came in which, is interesting, someone asked, I'll find the name in a second, pardon me, but they asked, uh, uh, this is Fausk, said, will there be creative classes named, or will there be very generic knight, archer, mage oh, types? Now, yeah. we, we know that it's, it's gonna be creative out. types. We're, I mean, this is for sure, but, so so that's kind of the obvious answer. But Brad, maybe you could talk about, and, and John, like the, 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 you know, we've had some great discussions with some really big guy, uh, big time artists and historians about like what influences not just the look and feel of the game, but the names, like the cultures, that kind of thing that we looked at to say, hey, what could these guys be outside of your kind of pretty typical cast molded wizard or cleric yeah. or knight? And unfortunately, this is my, like the, my favorite part of uh, design brainstorming is is some of this stuff. Like we had a blast making the three classes we created for Brazen. Yeah, um, that was you know, the, the Oracle, really, really the Stalwart, awesome. and the Beer Zerker. Beer Zerker, and, uh, and that was great. Um, but you know, we're just we haven't had the time to do that yet. So we're using words like fighter and warrior and knight just because they're you can get what that is, and it's easy to talk about yep. an archer, a mage, and a knight. But we definitely want to put our own slant on things and make classes that are memorable and unique. Um, but you're going to have some, uh, I think, skills and abilities that you, you should know what they do. And, and you know, we're not reinventing the wheel or the sword here. Yeah. Like, if I got a sword, I should be able to hit someone with it. That's right. Um, but the way it happens is going to be a little different, and your special stuff, I think, is going to be awesome. And to that point, I, I think that's a really good insight uh, that John said, you know, for people to see, like, kind of kind of like how the sausage is made behind the curtain at, at, in development, like we need a common vocabulary that's instantaneously recognizable. I yep. mean, and by we, I mean specifically the designers, John and, and Brad, like, you know, they, they, you get, like when you're an archer, okay, you know instantaneously, he's probably pretty lightly armored, he's got a good range attack, probably moves pretty fast too. There, there's, we have a, you know, that, that, that larger discussion of like, who's naming what, 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 what are the, what's the essence, the, the style of these characters, that involves a much larger group, the artists. The, the designers themselves, you know, the engineers are pretty way in. I mean, Double Fine's obviously pretty inclusive, so, yeah. But you need that common vocabulary just to get things done up front, you know? It's not all decided up front. And I'm excited about when we get to the point where we can actually um, script in and code in different skills and abilities and attacks for characters yeah. so that I can just go nuts. That's one of my favorite parts, too, is just like, like, okay, we got a character, I have a bunch of animations, and I can just... Uh, stub in and prototype all kinds of different attacks, and then for sure, yeah. Hey, look like at this. Want, this one's awesome. Look we what want you the do. system to be really flexible um, so that we can do a bunch of like different stuff. 
This is great that I just ran. I just ran Zane in there so that he gets <laughs> so he'd get poisoned. He get wailed on and then Coming poisoned good. and like everything. Yeah. everything's going great. Hey like, guys, when I, when I come back to the game, that's fantastic. Sorry to interrupt, Brad, but here's, yeah, yeah. here's another yeah. really good question, kind of related to what we were talking about. I like this idea uh, or this this uh, question. Will uh, this is from Door 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 is his name? Will marriages always go through, or will people sometimes refuse pairings? You know, p incompatibility. I don't like this person. Uh, sure. I mean, basically, a dice roll maybe on on one basic conversation level, but something more advanced than that. I mean, that, again, pretty specific. But have you put any? Yeah, I mean, we had talked that? about it like like when we had first started talking about. Why does that say zero percent? Is this uh, pure chocobo killer? He's done. That he's just gonna get counterattacked. That's weird. Oh. I can't go. I can't go back now. Nope. You're pretty much. Hmm. That's a, that's an interesting that's a thing. Huge. I. Lo Jungan said, "Don't worry, Ben is is to the rescue right now." <laughs> so. I'm gonna do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just. Oh, whiff. Whoa. <laughs> well, at least he didn't That's okay. That was a little bizarre. But uh, we're okay. So do I have an antidote for uh, Zane? He has one antidote. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just waiting for Buzzkirk yeah. to show up again. If you're this early in a fight, you should. So back to the question, um, I think that's still some, again something that like that we're exploring. Uh, you could definitely imagine a version of this game where the immortal king or queen is kind of the the rule of the land in terms of marriages and couplings, and that would definitely be um, very player player favoring in that like what you say goes, um, and that your subjects don't necessarily rebel against that. Uh, but it also might feel a bit too board gamey and a bit too. Robotic. Like we don't want these characters to feel like oh they're yeah. just little puppets yep. that it's, you're manipulating. It's but, definitely a goal to like make the characters as human as possible, yep. so that you like get attached to them, so that you feel really sad when they die. It's not really about <laughs> sadness though. I heard a great word today. Again, we can't tell you from who, but poignant. It's very poignant when the characters die because you are attached to them and you see them getting older and you know that they're not going to make it. And it's like it just feels. It is kind of a bummer. It's very poignant. But you weren't, like, this isn't the first time you've heard that, right? That word? Yeah. Brad learned a word today, everybody. <laughs> hey, everybody. Next no, week, was stay not... tuned. Brad's going to learn how to spell it. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, don't, don't ask me to spell poignant. Right it has now. a G. No, I'm actually a really good speller, I think. <laughs> I think. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I oh. just made that up. Yeah. Am I getting whaled on here? Is this whaled. okay? What are you doing? Stick All it right. in the sidewall when you get um, That's... <clears throat> So yeah, like oh, it, dude, he's gouging that guy's oh, eye. Darkness. Oh, he cannot darkness. see. Darkness is spreading. So if you're gonna have a good balance between uh, giving the player control over the uh, coupling, so that they really can get the right classes that they want, and the and really like nurture the bloodlines, versus characters showing that they have some preference, um, we're still figuring that out because it, it can go a lot of different ways, and also there's some good pluses and minuses on, on both approaches. That guy can hit you. Yeah, what? I think it's a height difference. It's just the height difference, yeah. I, I didn't think that it was uh, yeah, it was that bad. We'll do the, are those bombs? That guy can explode. Yeah, yeah if that you awesome kill him, will he always animation. explode? Uh, I, do, I don't remember that. That's going to be interesting. We're going to find out. I love his hurt face. It's just I know, like, I know. Oh, it's the saddest bomb ever. Oh my god. Swords hurt. I, well, at least at least your CPU guys are at doing least stuff. yeah they're they're really representing so they might fight before they just wander I'm, I'm letting them down look at this they're August. just one shotting right. guys they're just one shotting these little goblins Hooray. that's amazing okay so this guy will counter that attack guy is, uh, we're we're gonna just go so, for it yeah he's I, gonna die anyway so yeah just, yeah and it doesn't matter we're gonna end this battle on time and it does See, feel like kill, almost right? everybody in this game nice. can counter attack at least all the monsters okay. can. And it makes it really feel, I, I thought it feel, feels weird at the beginning of this game because it's like, I get in a lot of situations where it hurts me more than them to attack yes, me. Yes, And that yes. feels, I think that feels bad. I, you don't have counterattacks yet. I've always, yeah. I've always disliked that, especially early on. I think you're right that that's like a, a nice distinction. That this game's difficulty curve is just, and then it just drops out. Mm -hmm. Can I get out? I would have to hit this guy in the front. I probably don't want to do that. I'm going to attack this, attack this guy in the back. So, uh, the facing, we talked about facing a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, no one can hear me. But, uh, facing We're talking about facing, yeah. folks. Uh, <laughs> the direction you face making a difference in the game. Um, and, uh, it's got good gameplay uh, implications, but it, it, it's very board gamey and also um, really like 
the risk reward of facing is so obnoxious. Can, can they hear you? Can you hear me maybe, at all? Maybe you need to talk I'm, into my I'm chest. Talk, okay. So the <laughs> okay. risk reward of facing is like super obnoxious, I think, because it's great when you hit a guy from the back, but almost every time you do it, you expose your back, and then someone yes. just walks up and hits you. You know what I was thinking? So we've talked about like like how making the game asymmetric is awesome because it lets us to it lets us make different rules for the for the demons as opposed to the uh, the humans. Yeah. And uh, this is something we talked about, I think, a, a while back, where it was like, oh yeah, what if we, like, what if the demons had facing, but the player didn't, the right. humans didn't, so that I'm imagining have... like Me Metroid Prime has a lot of enemies where you need to hit yep. them, hit them yep. in the glowing spot on their butt. Yeah, but when you get attacked, it's like it doesn't really matter, doesn't matter. when they hit you, right? Right. So um, that that could maybe solve that problem where it feels really good to like maneuver yourself into a position where you can get behind somebody and like stab them. But, uh, and then you don't have to prompt and, every time. Yeah. Yes, yes. It slows you don't need to worry down. about the facing of your characters. That's just one potential way. What is the zero percent action? That again, that's a height difference. That's weird. I feel different. like they took that out of like the, the PSP War of the War of the Lions. I don't, I don't remember getting that very often. If you if you can't hit, you can't. It run. just doesn't right. even let you do it. Yeah. Uh, at least not for just standard melee attacks. I think yeah. you do get that for some special skills and abilities. This is, I'm also having a really awesome like muscle memory thing going yeah. on right now. Because uh, I haven't played this game in a really long time, but did that guy just get killed? Just just, I'm, oh. pretty sure, I'm pretty sure I just got counter-attacked jacked by that No, it's not dead yet. She's just, uh, she's just resting. Um, she's kneeling get down. Get away from and that bomb, what do you mean? What if I get some guts, though? Use a wish. Wish. Use a wish. What's I'm just gonna wish. What's gonna wish happen? Wish on a bomb. Can I wish on this bomb? Yeah. What happens? I think it'll heal him and you'll get hurt. I'm not doing that. <laughs> Can I? I can't wish myself. Uh no. Oh. It's All right, a I'll really um, bad translation. <laughs> what could that yeah, possibly mean? Yeah. I haven't played it in Japanese, so I don't actually. Is it just like kiss? Just <laughs> <laughs> it's like this. Yeah. Yeah, Zane can just kiss someone. Oh boy. Oh, that was a great animation, by the way. Oh it was boy. really good the anticipation on the bite, just to see the mouth go. <laughs> Where is this guy going? He's well going done, animator. It's cool though. The CPU characters have yeah, this under carrying. control, you guys. Yeah. Although you're coming close to some of those timers. Oh, and this um, bomb's running away, maybe huh? Maybe just put the whole thing on auto battle. Hey. I think that would be a really bad idea. Oh uh, yeah, I, I put the first battle on auto battle when I started this save up. And I lost the like the yep. tutorial battle that tells you how to move. Oh like boy. you lose that fight if you go on auto battle. Here, just throw we got this. You got it. Bam. Okay. Good. Story well done. There you go. Here you Mission go. Take complete. Over. Okay. So like that, I think I proved that I can play Final Fantasy Tactics with you know only losing one guy on a very early battle. That's pretty pro, <laughs> right? That's. <laughs> yeah. Until you get like a lot of classes. It's it's, it's interesting too. Um, and again, it's been a long time since I played the, the original. Uh, but uh, do you know if you do you earn uh, job points for jobs that you're not currently holding in this version? Because that's something that I was talking to somebody, and they were like, "Oh, I don't think you could do that." But in, in definitely in War of the Lions, like if I'm Sweet using secondary, woods. like you basically can earn job points for all these different jobs and end up mm -hmm. leveling leveling up in them, even if you're not one of them. Yeah, so, I think that, that's cool. It helps. I think it helps they sped game. it up. Moderately sized Chalice said he demands chalices of his size be fairly <laughs> represented in the game. <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing. That's pretty it's awesome. Yeah. We want to be very we inclusive, want to be of as all inclusive as possible. Yeah. So, you know, um, if your chalice is maybe not as big, we want you to feel like you have a place in the game and that you can come and play Master Chalice and not feel not feel right. like people are gonna make fun of you. you that's know? right. It's all, not, it's all that's relative. Not cool. That's not well. cool. I, I think yeah. I'm not gonna Yeah? We're going all like, offense. Well, because like, we're running out of items. I like the cut of your jib. We're running out of items, man. Well, can't we buy more items? Uh, yeah. yeah, probably. We're getting, probably. Some, we're getting some gill. Maybe some Phoenix Downs. Those, just, are, those are helpful. Just making it rain gill yeah. over here. Oh, the oh, the slums. Oh, here's yeah. a cool idea. Massive chalice. Could we steal or capture a demon and steal his tech? Yeah. we. I mean, for sure it'll be about like... You know, taking their technology and their bodies after you've killed them, and like trying to figure out what their motivations are, and like why they're here, and like what you know how their technology works, and all that stuff. 
Um, so that'll be part of it. But I kind of like the idea. I feel like we've seen this a couple times of people suggesting like capturing the demons and then having them fight on your side. You know, like mm. brainwashing them or converting them so that they would fight on your side. I don't know if you'd be able to establish them like as bloodlines. Like I think they would exist outside of the bloodline system, maybe if they're on your team or something. I don't know how that would work, but um, I kind of like. I, I love that. I have this interesting um, vision in mind of um, capturing a demon and then kind of. It's almost like turning the demonic torment in against the demon and then using him as a gun. Like basically, like causing it to have That's so awesome. much pain that it's going to shoot out in one direction and cause damage to whoever's out there. Um, but uh, maybe you'll you get some of the dark side from doing that. Um, That's pretty sweet. It's oh graph. God, we graph. Yeah, it's probably. I would go with the B. Yeah, I remember losing this mission a couple times. I remember losing this mission yeah. a couple times. Well, and then I never lost this mission. Into, he turns into like a. <laughs> He turns into like a demon guy. Yes, he does. I mean, uh, spoilers. Spoilers. Oh man. What, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. They go up to the top. It's sort of it's sort of hard to have spoilers on a game that's like, how old is this game? Ninety seven. Yeah. Ninety seven. Can someone do the math? Ninety years. <laughs> this game Nine was created ninety years ago <laughs> by years. Japanese artisans. <laughs> it's an artisanal game. I was in high school. Yeah, I was in high school. I was in a band. You were in, in high band. school? You guys were both in high school? We were in high school. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God. Wow, I was in really? College. Jeez. Oh, boy. <laughs> almost done with high school. Okay, good. Yeah. I, I graduated high school in 96. Do not do not move him over there. Yeah, I know. This is a trap. You I need know. to go that's up. That's a trap. You're You're just, doing totally yeah, yeah, don't even. Just let the CPU <laughs> do it. They got, I think I the like that. I like that. That wizard's going to get us. <laughs> Look out, you guys. That wizard's going to get us. Can't get up there. I, you just need to wait a turn. It's okay. This is your like, don't rush into it right. mission, right? Yeah. This is where the game designer is trying to be like, look, moving your guys all the way up in there is maybe not the best approach Ooh. every time. Because you get shot here. by the freaking archer for five turns. That um, um I, I had really do on. like the whole um, uh, I forget what they call it. Their time interval system. Oh, the turns. The turns. Yeah, like what? How? It's like it's not like the player moves all of his units and then the enemy moves all of his units. It has more to do with like an initiative stat or a hate stat. I can't remember exactly what it's called, but um, the turn action. order, I believe it's mm -hmm. a turn order thing. And there's a way that you can pop it up and see exactly when your characters will like have their turns in relation to Free the enemy's potions. turns. And also when, when spells will kick off and uh, yes. things like and that charge was, That's what made me think about it, yeah. is the archer's charge skill is very cool in this game. I also like, like that when you haste somebody, their walk idle animation just speeds up. Yeah, and yeah. Like, oh, I'm going real fast. <laughs> um, I think that's pretty cool. Good good use of assets just there. Something to that effect. That's easy. You don't have to make a new animation. Just speed it up. Thank you. Um, Whitman. Whitman. Bring me the Whitman. head of Whitman. <laughs> I, will, I will bring you the hat of Whitman. Yeah, Walt? bring me the hat. <laughs> bring me the hat and eyeballs of that black mage. Because that's pretty is much that all w -W? it is. Is that WW? Yeah, WW. <laughs> I'm surprised that guy's not a chemist. <laughs> oh, we should totally do the Breaking B Bad playthrough of Final Fantasy Tactics. It'd be great. Okay, what is happening now? Where everyone's oh, a chemist. No, everyone's no. a chemist. Oh, the all chemist party. Oh. But this is rough, man. Holy. Shingro says, bring me the hat of Whitman. <laughs> <laughs> bring me the hat and glowing eyeballs of that man. Um, oh, oh this mission is so bad. This is a trap. This was, uh, the one, this was the one, my brother, I was talking to him online. I was like, hey, we're going to stream Final Fantasy Tactics today. He's like, he's like, hey, did you play through the beginning? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I had Ben Burbank play the first hour to make sure that like we could actually show some battles and stuff. Sweet. And he's like, Oh, dude, the first, you gotta grind up for like three hours so that you can get past. <laughs> and I think that he referred to it as that effing mission with the mages in the back row. I think that's what we're experiencing what right we're now. Yep. Yeah, I think, I think this wet. is it. So we might have to do a little bit of grinding after this. That's like, okay. we'll see. We'll go back to we'll the kill some Kill some Swiggy forest swamps. animals. Swiggy Woods. Just Swiggy hang out on Swiggy Woods. Yeah. Make ourselves Swiggy some mages. So nice. Silky's not really pulling nice. her weight, let's be honest. Silky yeah. Oh, punched in the... Wow, that, oh, that guy just... Dead. Wait, hey Ben, maybe you can murder another okay. chocobo while you're here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Okay, see, you're, you're, you're out of wizard range for yeah. now. For now. The wizards are... are Next turn, it's though. Gonna, it's going to rain gonna fire. Fun. It's going to be wizard okay. Or okay, okay, Thundara. Okay, okay. Can't or even get up here to the... Uh, Lizara. Can't even get to that dude. Uh, this is so you. Wish. <laughs> wish now. <laughs> I like that it just says wish now. <laughs> wish now! Do it now. Wish now. Oh. oh, 
there's no good decision here. No, you're gonna get shot. This guy has four this guy HP. Is dead. Yeah, you know what would be great if we had a chemist that could feed that guy a potion. Look, all right. Yeah. You, you think you should buy some equipment? He's gonna do it. He's gonna do it. No, he's not. No, he's He's gonna hit that he guy wants though. to punch. Good enough, good enough. August is all about just sorting. Hey Ben, if Genghis uh, Khan enough. saw you coming, he would not be freaked out. So another thing I do like about FFT is the ability to do knockbacks on characters. It's a bit too random. You don't have a good idea when it's gonna happen, which sucks. But you know, if that attack could have knocked him off the roof, and he would have suffered fall damage, mm -hmm. and that's cool. So I, I hope we can. We've been talking about that ways that. to manipulate character positions. Yeah, in cool I, I want to be able to. You know, knock my enemies around, well, use environmental maybe. obstacles. Was that silky um, or is this silky? This is, I think that was Melissa. This okay, this is and they also have really cool attacks that are that not damaging, but they move guys back a lot. So that's cool. Is this it? Are you going to take your medicine right here? I'm about to take some uh, friggin'. <laughs> hey, Snowy Scar says, can you add the function that if you name your character Sean Bean, he will automatically die in the next match? <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. Uh, yeah, he just gets randomly decapitated. Exactly. Oh, man. Well, that's the oh, question. No. Does he go out, you know, oh, Game of Thrones style or Lord of the Rings style? That's, oh, no. That's the real Look at question. this. Oh, they are charging some. This is super oh, rude. No. Oh, They're clogging no. the stairs. Everyone's going to die here. Yeah. This is bad. The oh, and look at that. Oh, that, that mage oh, is going to hit two man. Oh no, you get to move. Punch that mage in the you face. You can move, but oh, he's still going to hit the there. guys that he targeted unless you get, targeted the square. Can you get next to any of them? Well, I don't know. You know, I can't get next to anyone who's casting a spell because they clogged the... Uh... Oh man. You've been defeated by a PlayStation 1. How do you feel? Uh, it felt worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Feels pretty bad, though. Is it me, or do those wizards look like Orko from... From He-Man. From He-Man. I, I do get the feeling that the Final Fantasy wizard is inspired by Orko. Yeah. Um, it's the same time. Not as annoying him. as uh -oh. Orko, but... Oh, oh that's it. Bite he was your an tongue, archer. John I was wondering Swiss why Helm. that guy was punching. Yeah. He's an archer. He's got oh, punched by yeah, an archer. He is just... I think this mission is done. Yeah, we're about to get... We're about to get... Like, yeah, it feels there bad. Because here comes here a double go. bolt. Oh, snap. Oh, some thunder. He's out, Silky. Oh, wow. man. Oh, that is hey, brutal. Hey, level up. God, I hate it when enemies can level up in this game. It's yeah. like... It's I mean, such an insult. Yeah, you will like, never uh, see them again after this battle. But, like, they're like, oh, yeah, he's getting job points. <laughs> you just got By casting fuck spells out. in your face. Yeah. Like, uh, what? Uh, You're like, oh, Whitman just killed two of your guys. Like, that wizard was like, served you pancakes? And then said, <laughs> losers. Okay, all right, so we still got, we still got, like, Staying alive. Guy. Still got one guy, and yeah. I can't get any. Run, run, run into the corner. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good, wish. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's about what we need to do over this, this we, uh, point. Okay, he could, he, yeah. I actually, I actually. The AIs could just handle it. I Let them handle it. wishing is yeah. the right choice. Now. Please. Wish now. I Which wish. Which damage to me, by the way. Hey. Oh my, that's, okay. out of all the decisions you could make, I think that was mm -hmm. the best one. That yeah. was the only one that Wow, did he just do nothing? Because uh, he, he can't, because the stairs are blocked. Yeah, he's blocking the stairs. That's here. great. Oh, this is hey, going to end like, such talk failure. Back here. Oh, that guy's just going to charge it up. Here comes the magic. <laughs> you got oh any magic on your side, Ben? Uh, nope. Yeah, the nope, pointy hats. Uh, uh -uh. But Orko does. Also, this wizard is named Dallas. <laughs> 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 did you see that? I'm pretty sure he is. <laughs> Unless I just made that up, which I don't think I did. I heard the cable was broken. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. In the face. That was yeah, and look, Samson. Samson is all like, leveling up. Here comes the bolt. Oh. oh. Zap. Oh, oh boy. Ooh. Okay. Oh, good. He's a better wizard yep, now. He's a better <laughs> wizard. <laughs> he can whoop your ass that much more effectively. This, this is so terrible. Okay. Yeah, they, man, <laughs> this is giving me some crazy flashbacks. Yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting the shakes. I'm seeing, I'm seeing trails. I don't know. It's, this is not what you want. Uh, oh, he's gonna even just blast his own wizard. He just and unfortunately, cares. in most of these games, right, like when you lose the mission, you have to go back to the main menu. Yeah. You have to see like the, you know, square soft prompt. Like it's just, oh, it's awful. <laughs> I hate that about I I Castlevania Symphony of the Night as well. I Very, love Symphony of yeah. the Night, but every oh, time man. you die, oh. it takes another three minutes to yeah. get back into the game. Yeah. Oh. Fire. You are only hope. 
Yeah, look at this. This guy just oh. smoked his own guys. That's just like, that's the com look Dallas level Dallas. up. Dallas. <laughs> oh, an even better wizard. <laughs> Finish now, him. Now what is happening? They can't get up the stairs now, right? No, yes. can they? Yeah, they can't walk by the dead body. What? Oh, they don't need to. oh, oh no. They do. Yes. Okay, so, so we're gonna, the we're gonna, yeah, so, and Zane that's how the Zodiac Uba. Breaker story ends. That's it. <laughs> it's, uh, Zane died, much. and, uh, that's it. Game over. All right. Do you need a keyboard to, no, no. to reboot Boom. it, or are you just like, okay? We're gonna go through the lengthy reload se sequence. Thank you, Squaresoft. Yeah, yeah, it just goes back to that. I like that. It just goes back. You're like, yeah. You're like, here are the people that totally boned you, Squaresoft. <laughs> yeah. Send us an email. Email didn't even exist when it was game. At least it yeah. doesn't go no, loading, like, loading, yeah. loading, loading, loading. Send, Send us a copy serve mail. Send us a copy serve mail. At yeah. 711, comma, use, 4. If you happen to use Prodigy, <laughs> you could, you could send us an ele electronic telegram. Should we call the hit line? Uh, exactly. Do you have any more questions from the chat? Mm. Okay. Yeah. okay, we got to just go back Some and days. forth. Do you want me to take over for yeah. a bit? I gotta go work. Actually. Okay, right. you go do Ben's some gotta work. go work. Bye, okay. Everybody. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, Thanks Ben. ben. Choke also, wait, we have some war funds. We do. There is in the castle. places to go. We can shops. shop, right? Let's Here's a good out. question. Uh, I like the fitting room. I like the optimization feature of the fitting room. I think that's really cool. This game doesn't care about you. <laughs> so I think somebody's using uh, a dagger. We have a Dude, lot of daggers. Just optimize them in the fitting room. I don't know if the fitting room... Hey, oh, guys, I don't think we can answer this one, uh, you know, exactly, because this is pretty specific, but it's a big one. Uh, maybe we can talk about it. What are the game over conditions for Massive Chalice? Like a set amount of defeats, territory loss to demons, bloodline wipeout? Like, have you guys put any uh, mental calories into that one? Good question. That, yeah, that's a really good question. Here, you, you, I'll get <laughs> our warriors and I'll, I'll discuss this with the good I get to go shopping! When Brad yeah. talks, it takes all, all of his right. focus. It kind of does. I'm actually a really terrible multitasker. Uh, um, uh, Anthony, sure. do you want to sit over here? I'd love to. I can't see you. Why don't you sit on this couch over here? Oh, oh wait. Is that a couch? I'm trying to use it. No, it's button. not. I just like, I just want to be <laughs> oh able to God, see you because I feel like, I, I, I feel like it's weird like talking to the camera. I kind of want to like, can I sit look here? at you as sure you can. Actually, you know what? Can we do this? Hey yeah, now. That's, what, that's what I was thinking. This Does is much more good? comfy. Okay, good. I like this. Uh, so yeah, we've been talking about like, you know, what is the lose condition for, for the game? Sure. And, you know, like there, when you take the the reactionary gameplay of the strategic layer of XCOM, uh, I felt like they really needed to have. Are you getting some potions? Yes. Get some battle boots oh, yeah, too. Yeah, that's good. Battle boots are the best. Don't have, we don't have a ton of money. Okay. We, we do really, have some Phoenix I just really like battle boots. Let me get I a couple of potions I, first. I bet people in the chat like battle boots too. They're good. All uh, right, we'll get. So when you have that reactionary thing, it's like uh, in New XCOM they have, um, I believe they call it like the Doomsday Clock. Yeah. It's sort of like a weird concept where it feels like you're battle boots. You're slowly losing your grasp of of everything. You know. And I think that's like actually a pretty, I, I don't know, I, I wish there was a different way to do this, but I like how it accomplishes having uh, win the battles, lose the war, as sort of the overall philosophy of that game, is that if you're not sort of progressing the story and moving forward and trying to like research the critical things that you need to research and go on the specific missions that you have to do and di win these specific battles, if you're just running the timeline Fighting the random battles, um, you're gonna like be losing ground. Right. Like I think that that is a really cool um, that is a really cool concept. I think that it, it puts pressure on you, but I think that it does it in a way that might not necessarily make people super comfortable. Like I think that there's yeah. there's a better there's there's got to be a better um, system out there for making people feel pressured to like continue progressing through the game. Um, but I, I don't know, like, I think that that one works and we're going to be like looking at it as a possible solution, but I think that, um, we're going to be looking at other, other ways to like do it. Well, I, I can see it as, as like at one point definitely putting that in and using it, if nothing else, just to see how it feels. Cause we, we have a few, but pretty substantial systems going on in this game already, you know? So that is kind of a, kind of a nice, 
uh, uh, I guess sets a sets a pace. So you you know certain things are happening at certain times. But uh, my, that's my initial tough. my initial thought was to link um, losing battles to um, losing keeps. So the, the, I see. the idea was that you would like, so you're taking over these keeps that are around the realm. Uh, so let me back up. The starting, the starting sort of setup for the, for the world, uh, I'm imagining like a, uh, it, that's like the big demonic invasion. It was like, that's like when it first happened. So you had like all the houses were maybe like warring with each other or just disliked each other. And then there's like this huge demonic invasion that like, wrecks half of the realm and it's like it kind of messes up a lot of these keeps that are around right and on. so you have access to a few of these keeps at the beginning of the game and you can see your bloodlines from the very beginning and that's cool those those will sort of be like your initial bloodlines but then you'll have to either spend resources or or do quests to reclaim the other keeps in the realm and kind of fix them up and then be able to to uh establish new bloodlines in those in those keeps i see so the the concept then for for losing the game is the, is the question, is that uh, you would, that when the demons come back, sometimes they'll just attack random locations in the realm, but occasionally they'll attack the actual keeps themselves. They'll like siege one of the keeps. The really cool thing about that is that the Lord and uh, the Duke and the Duchess, I, I feel like we were using Lord and Lady of the, of the keep, yeah. but I think it's it's cooler. Regent. Yeah, yeah, Lord and Regent, or mm -hmm. like Duke and Duchess. I don't know, it's like less, like a, a duchess sounds like she could be like super badass. Yeah, like she wears armor, like, you know, she's Where like butt. a lady is like, feels like a sort of, it doesn't feel like a very feminist word to me, like to mm -hmm. be like, oh, a lady. Like she's. It's kind of antiquated, you know? Yeah, it it's, like especially when you think about medieval stuff, right? right? It's like, it's like she's, well, she's got to wear a dress. And it's like, no, like our women are badass. They're going to like get in there and wreck shop. So, sure. um, so, okay, so you have like, the, the Lord and Regent, we'll, we'll go with that, because that's I, I like the, the sort of gender neutrality of those terms. Like, the Lord and Regent of that keep, will they will have to participate in that battle. So you've retired them, and that means that their bloodline is really important to you, which is cool. I like the Chocobo dance. It is a great. Um, so like the Lord and so you'll you'll dispatch your hero squad to go like like fight the fight the, the pivotal battle with these demons. They're they're invading this keep, and then uh, so you'll have your normal hero squad, which will probably it probably be like five or six uh, characters will mm -hmm. make up like your hero squad. You mentioned that before, yep. Yeah, yeah it, that's what we're squads. looking at. I mean, I know that like some people really like the like big squads. Like old XCOM had like. 14 guys or something that you could jam into the Sky Ranger and stuff, and I think that that's maybe like it just makes the it just makes the tactical battles take a, a really long time, and it also makes each individual soldier less important to the overall mission. Like whereas you know like like in this in um, in Final Fantasy Tactics, you know this mission that John's on right now, he has only five characters, and so it means that he just has to be like really careful with like the positioning of each character, make sure that he doesn't lose them. Each one is very important. I think that's cool. But so you'll send your, you know, five or six uh, heroes to like deal with this demonic attack. But then also like you'll also be controlling the. Um, so for these specific keep invasion missions, uh, you'll ha actually have a bigger squad because the lord and the regent will oh, also be forced to fight. And so and and so is I, it kind of like having like 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 a squad boss, like like a general in the field who's like maybe can provide buffs for his dudes? That well, I I had kind of thought of it as like no, like they're they're going to just sort of like come out of retirement for that mission almost. You know, oh, I see. Like the lord and the regent are going to like suit up again. And they might be really old, right? Sure. Like and and they might and their skills might have atrophied a lot, but they're like really important because you want their bloodline to continue. And I think that um, we want to have those, uh, those missions in particular I've thought a little bit about. There are a bunch of different ways that we can set those up. Like one would be like uh, the, the Lord and the Regent are like kind of trapped in their throne room, right? And the, and the hero squad is coming in. So you actually have, you have two characters that are kind of like locked away farther in the environment. And you'll sort uh, of be sure. like holding out you know, while the squad actually tries to fight through and like link up with them, and and then you know it's like so it's, it's, totally. it's like it's a super cool scenario that would, and I don't think they would all have to be like this. Yeah. We talked about another one where it would be like um, like a night mission where you have to go assassinate. Like it's like maybe the the enemy demons are like camped too close yeah, yeah. to the to the keep, and in the night you think that you can like sneak in 
um, the, your hero squad with the regent and the with the lord and the regent and like assassinate the demon general, which would then like totally tip the thing. And that would play out like a completely different mission, but it still sort of fills the same role of like major demonic attack yeah. on one of the keeps. So now getting back to the actual question, like how would you lose? If you lose one of these pivotal missions around the keeps, one of these I keep see. invasion missions, that would destroy that entire piece of the realm. And then that means that you lose the bloodline, you can't, um, you don't get any like income or whatever whatever the resources are for the game. You won't get that on a yearly so basis. I, I know we're And like you'll, you'll just start sort of sliding, yeah. you know, down because you just have like less resources. The only problem is that like, it's gonna feel, it always feels really crappy to like lose those tactical battles. So I think that like, I'm very interested in a system that's similar to the new XCOM thing. Sure. Because again, it's the way that it's a solution where you can win all the battles, but just you know be actually sliding, and losing the war. Right. And and like that, it feels much. It feels much better to like win all the fights, even if you're still losing individual characters along the way. Which I want people to be like, you know, embracing that permadeath aspect of the game if they sure. can. Sure. Um, but then like, yeah, they actually like. Uh, you know, they can win all those battles. They're losing a couple characters as they go, and that's like a big deal, but they're still winning all the tactical battles. But they're just like, they're kind of like slowly losing the overall game. How's yep. it going, John? Well, doing okay, but just lost <laughs> one of my, uh, my knights here. But I, have some Phoenix, I do have Phoenix down. All right, good. That's awesome. And you got some battle boots. I saw that you did yeah, purchase some we, battle boots. Yeah, we battle booted up. Get that up. plus one move. This guy is about that's dead. That's what you need. I want to see you kill this guy with a chemist. So, Brad, it sounds a lot like what you're describing. I know we're just kind of blue sky talking, like you know, early on here, but but it's it sounds like different. It's not just about losing X amount of keeps and or, or castles, and then you know, game over. It's like losing a particular, maybe oh, a I small have. one, could be a pivotal battle, and it could happen at a random time. So it's not just location based; it's location and time and situation based. That could be really the big title turns, and mm -hmm. it also makes me feel like. And John and I share a share a, a fellow geek out about this. Like we've talked about, like uh, like the like the recon marines, the force recon marines, like you know the baddest of the bad. These guys are no joke. And like so, these can you know that's what I was thinking when you're like you know you got this hero squad that has to get to the keep. But you still have a general, like a four-star general. I mean, talking parallels, you're not literally, but like he's like your your duchess, or she's your duchess, or something like that, that you have to go and defend. So it's a different mm -hmm. style of combat that might come out of that. That's mm -hmm. that's pretty exciting. And it's cool. We also talked about, um, we've talked about ways to make it feel more like there's a, a greater war going on. Because like, we really like the, um, the fact that the squad is small. You know, it's like the squad is small, and we're at the human scale here, like in a, in a tactical game, like right. Final Fantasy Tactics or XCOM or Disgaea or whatever. It's like, you know, we're at this very like human scale and you're getting attached to these characters and that's really important. But I think there are ways to sort of like make it feel like there's a greater war going on. You know, and I think the way we've been talking about the tactical battles is that there is a greater war going on, but you're actually controlling these pivotal battles. Like that's, I've been trying to use that terminology. It's like, it's like the pivotal battle. Like, like the, the human army and the demon army are like, really evenly matched so it's like it's like on the knife edge and like based yeah, yeah. on based on the fight between your heroes and the demon generals like that's going to determine which way that the overall fight goes between the armies and i think that's really cool i think that's a cool way that's a cool compromise to make it still feel like there's a big war going on but um but also feel like you have that like human emotional connection to the individual characters that are like fighting it also i think it i think it maps really really well to a fantasy game because you have stuff like Lord of the Rings, where it's like, yeah, there's a big war going on, but you know, it's still like the fellowship is the most important thing in that in that story. Right. It's like all about these individual characters um, that are that are like you know that have a quest and they're 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 like trying to accomplish something that's going to have a major impact on the outcome of the overall war. And, and something you've said time and time again, and John, you and John both talked about this, like it's like investment in your characters. Like you want to feel that loss, you want to feel that win. It sounds like what you're describing, like you know. It's great to get behind a small band of guys that are going against odds. I mean, it sounds cheesy when I say it out loud, but like that's like if you can create events like that, man, talk about investment, like not wanting to see your guys die. And then over the generational time span, like that would be pretty rough, but, but you got it. Nice. And you didn't lose. Was that Silky that fell over? Yeah, yeah. She's I don't fine. know about her. <laughs> <laughs> Something you know, I don't know. I mean, she got tackled a bunch. 
I did see a double tackle that happened. And it was good that we killed the chocobo early because chocobos could heal with their little chocobo dance. Yeah. Look at this, 1200 and, uh, gill. I'm gonna make it rain. <laughs> That's one pair of battle boots. Come Snowy on. Scar Couple suggested potions, that we have potions. a. Uh, uh, user Snowy Scar suggested we have a Jack Black cameo as a fallen demon. Let's see oh, if we can make that happen. That would be amazing. That would be pretty cool. I think that we would need to raise more money just to play yeah. Jack Black, yeah. though. Yeah. I don't think that we've quite gotten to just what his salary would be <laughs> That's to right. actually do the VO. Exactly. I don't really know. I, I, I don't really know how much it would cost, but I think it would be expensive. I'm, I'm it would be sure. amazing to get a Tenacious D song. Oh, oh man, man, that would be incredible, yeah. yeah. Song. Just, yeah, just having Jack Black. It would be a tribute to the greatest video <laughs> game theme song ever. Having, having Jack Black and Kyle Gass as demons that you could fight in the game would be pretty, pretty amazing.